welcome back to Talk Therapy Channel. I'm Tammy Fletcher, Licensed Marriage and Family Therapist, and today we're going to be revisiting the topic of social anxiety, including some updates from the newly published DSM-5, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual for Mental Disorders, which just came out um, a week or so ago, published by the American Psychiatric Association. Social anxiety disorder, which the DSM-4 called social phobia, is an excessive and unreasonable fear of social or interactive type situations. Anxiety or intense nervousness and feeling self-conscious arise from a fear of being watched, judged, or criticized by others. A person with social anxiety disorder basically feels afraid that they will make mistakes or look bad or be judged or criticized in front of other people. This can escalate to the point of panic attack for some. As a result of this fear, the person may either try to endure social situations despite feeling an extreme amount of distress, or they may begin to avoid them altogether. To receive an actual diagnosis of social anxiety disorder, the person has to experience fear or nervousness or anxiety that is out of proportion to the actual threat or danger posed by the situation. Symptoms may include heart palpitations, trembling, rapid breathing, sweating, blushing, or even nausea and vomiting. This is one of the most common of the anxiety disorders. It's estimated there are 19.2 million people in the U.S. who suffer from social anxiety disorder. People with this type of social anxiety experience something that we call anticipatory anxiety, which means feeling fearful, um, nervous, anxious before the event even arrives, sometimes weeks or months in advance. Now most of us do feel some nervousness before something like a job interview or giving a presentation in front of a group of people. But for those with social anxiety disorder, this fear can be crippling. In many cases, adults with social anxiety disorder tend to realize that their fear is unreasonable, that it's out of proportion to what they're actually logically experiencing. Children may or may not understand that their fears don't fit the actual danger or threat of the situation. They may not have the emotional maturity yet. People with social anxiety disorder may experience fear around a specific event, such as speaking in front of other people. Most cases, though, find the person experiencing that type of anxiety in more than one setting. Some of those might include um, working in front of other people, speaking in front of others, meeting new people for the first time, and that includes dating, um, starting a new job, anytime they have to go into a situation where it's uncomfortable. I've even had my own clients tell me that they experience social anxiety around their friends and family sometimes, people that they're familiar with. Although worries about things like being the center of attention or having to raise your hand and ask a question or give a report to a group. That's a common fear that most people have. But those with social anxiety disorder experience that fear and anxiety to an excessive level. They worry about it to the extreme before, during, and after the event. They worry that they may do something that is humiliating or embarrassing or that other people around them are watching and judging or feeling critical of them. Now obviously this disorder has a negative impact on the person's life. It can affect their ability to enter into relationships, to socialize with other people, or to go to work or school. Sometimes we will find that in order to find a way to cope with the anxiety they're experiencing, those with social anxiety disorder may misuse alcohol or drugs in order to get through uncomfortable situations. They may also drink or take drugs in order to sort of self-medicate for depression, which can co-occur with anxiety. Now let's talk a little bit about treatment for social anxiety disorder. As with most 
mental health disorders. There is no one treatment that works for everyone. And people with social anxiety disorder are individuals. They're different among themselves. So what I'm going to try to do is give you an overview of some of the most common current thinking about this disorder. And then I'll include some links below where if you'd like to, you can do some investigating and find out more information on your own. People with social anxiety disorder are thought to suffer from distorted thinking, which includes false beliefs about social situations as well as the negative opinions of other people. Let me give you a couple of examples to illustrate what I mean by distorted thinking. If I raise my hand and ask a question at this meeting, I will look like a fool. That's an example of distorted thinking. I've sort of already made my mind up about what's going to happen if I raise my hand, so either I do it and I feel horrible about it, or I don't even ask the question that I have. I avoid the situation completely. Another one might be, I am no good at making conversation, so people at this party are going to hate me. It's sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy. You're telling yourself these things, these distorted thoughts, and it can affect your behavior and the way you interact with others because you feel completely uncomfortable. So one of the most common ways of treating social anxiety disorder is with cognitive behavioral therapy. If we can help clear up any distortions in your thought pattern, um, strengthen or improve your self-concept, your view of yourself, and help you to develop a realistic idea of the likelihood that other people are forming negative opinions about you, we can help you develop more realistic and healthy thought patterns. We also sometimes include social skills training and assertiveness training when treating social anxiety disorder. Sometimes there's a genuine lack of knowledge about how to do these things, how to interact with other people. Whether you're in a work situation or a social event, speaking up or talking to other people when you genuinely don't know how to do it can be extremely stressful and anxiety provoking. Next, relaxation training can be an enormous help in dealing with just about any kind of anxiety. We work with clients to help them begin to notice their early signs of becoming anxious, um, identifying their own patterns of anxiety and what that looks like. And then we start to build skills like deep breathing, muscle relaxation, things like that to set up steps that the person can use when they start to feel anxious to help them calm any fears and feel more relaxed. Finally, there is medication available to help deal with anxiety. Generally, it's used in conjunction with some of the therapies that I've already mentioned. My suggestion in most cases is to try therapy first, and if we don't see improvement in an agreed upon period of time, then we make a referral to a physician who can speak with you, do an evaluation, including your physical health, and prescribe any needed medication. Medication doesn't always have to be a permanent solution, but sometimes it can help a person get over the worst of their symptoms as they work through and learn more techniques and tools that they can use in their lives to master anxiety on their own. As I mentioned in most of my videos, I also want to know what my clients are eating and drinking. If you have symptoms of anxiety, and you're drinking coffee all day or soda that's full of caffeine and sugar and your symptoms get worse, chances are pretty good your diet, um, what you're taking into your body is contributing to some of your mental health symptoms. There does seem to be a correlation between nutrition, diet, and mental health. So be kind to your body, feed it nutritious food, and chances are your mental health will show a benefit as well. So there's an overview of social anxiety disorder as well as some ideas for professional help and self-help. Thank you so much for watching this video. I welcome your comments below on anything to do with social anxiety disorder and I look forward to seeing you next time.